Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHex.com. Let's prepare the SD card for the WaveShare JetBot. The page notes that the software part of this guide is mostly based on NVIDIA JetBot Wiki. Lots of very useful information. Let's go back. Let's prepare the SD card. Download the JetBot image. Click here to download it. Download. Oh, it's 7.3 gigabytes. It is too large for Google to scan for viruses. Would you still like to download this file? Download anyway. This will take a few minutes. Let's go open up our SD card package so that we can get ready to flash it. Let's open up the packages. Here we have our SD card reader, USB style, and our SD card. If your machine has an SD card reader, of course you can use this type of adapter, or a micro SD slot if available. We will use the USB SD card adapter since it was included in our kit. We're lucky, it only goes in one way. Then remove the cover for the USB port. And we're good to go. Our SD card image is finished downloading. Let's look in the folder. There it is. I have my download set up to be on D colon. Yours is probably on C colon. Okay, we can close that up. Okay, we can close this up and that up. Let's plug our USB card reader in. We'll dismiss this. Now we are going to use the Etcher software app to write the image to the SD card. Let's download Etcher. We're on Windows 10. Let's download. And we'll open up the file. License agreement. I accept my fate. I agree. We want to flash from a file. Go to your download folder. Make sure it's going to write to the SD card and flash. Yes, please. It says this will take a little while. We'll come back when it's done. Flash complete. The flash and verification procedure took about an hour. This will go considerably faster if you have a built-in SD card reader in your PC. Now we can remove the SD card and use it in our Jetson. We attach a mouse, a keyboard, and an HDMI monitor to the Jetson. I have found that if you remove the protective film from the display, you will be able to see it better. And it's satisfying. Plug in the power adapter. It may take 15 minutes or so before you can use a Jetson, even if the batteries are fully charged. Remove the prepared SD card from the USB adapter. And insert the SD card into the Jetson. 
The SD card slot is located on the underside of the Jetson module. The on switch is located on the power board on the Jetson Nano connector side. Turn the power switch on. The green power light will go on on the Jetson and the Jetson will begin its boot process. During the boot process, the OLED display on the JetBot will illuminate. Let's switch over to the JetBot main display. Let's set up our wireless network connection. Click the network icon in the status bar, then select your network. You may have to use more networks to find yours. I have selected mine. Password. And then press connect. Connection established. All is good in the world. Next, we open up the Chromium web browser and navigate to the WaveShare JetBot wiki. When you restart your JetBot, it will be on the Wi-Fi network that you assigned. I did not restart the JetBot. I went directly to step five and updated the JetBot software as directed. Open up a terminal and follow the directions as given. We can see that our NV power model is set to five watts already, so we don't have to change anything. But it's good to know that we can configure it through the terminal as described in configure power mode. Then we're good to go. There's descriptions here on the wiki on how to run all of the different sample programs and examples. Let's shut down the Jetson. Then we will disconnect all of the peripherals. Once the Jetson has shut down, hit the off switch. Wait a little while and then restart the Jetson. When the Jetson restarts, you will see the IP address that you assigned it. You're ready to test it out. Okay, we're back on the Windows machine. We've placed the JetBot on a table behind us. The Jupyter Notebook server running on the Jetson. Let's connect to it. The IP address is available on the OLED display on the back of the JetBot. And it's on port 8888. Password. Ooh, fancy graphics. And we are in the basic motion notebook. Welcome to JetBot's browser-based programming interface. This document is called a Jupyter Notebook. Importing the robot class. In order to run one of these cells in the notebook, we select the text, then we hit the Run button. The notebook advances to the next cell. Also, notice that a number appeared next to the cell we just ran. Let's select the next cell and run it. Warning, the next command will make the robot move. Let's run this and see what happens. Oh my, it's going pretty fast. How do I stop it? I'll hit this button. That's pretty scary. In real life, it was going pretty fast. Oh, I was supposed to hit this robot stop. Well, at least one of the motors works. Let's see if the other motor works. Let's go right. Select the cell and hit run. Interesting, it works differently now. Must be because I interrupted the kernel. Robot, stop. Let's try the next example. I recentered the robot on the table. Let's import time. We select the next cell and let's run it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, almost off the table. Looks like that works. 
Good news. I'm satisfied that our motors work. When you get the chance, go through the rest of this notebook and have some fun. Jet pot, jet pot, happy little jet pot, jet pot, jet pot, jet pot, go. Jet pot, jet pot, happy little jet pot, jet pot.